first off, why am I talking about Micropolis today? There's a lot of folks that probably know more than I do, but I've been building Micropolis for quite a little bit. Uh, but I'm also here to talk about Micropolis trains. And so what do I know about trains? Well, that's me crawling underneath a quarter mile long Christmas train trying to tie up some electrical cables that started to dangle on a rainy day. <laughs> uh, so I'm up topside, I'm down underneath, I'm an electrician or a brakeman on the trains. And so the train part today is really kind of a lean in from my love of trains as well as Lego. I do want to try and get through the first portion of Micropolis quickly, but we do have some folks who are new to Micropolis, so we are going to spend a little bit of time on it. First off, simply put, Micropolis was a modular building standard. The idea was that you'd start with a 16 by 16 stud base, but there are some mechanics to it. And in the picture you can see there's a plate on the bottom, a brick layer in the middle with a Technic brick on each of the four sides. That's so you can peg blocks together and, and anchor them side by side so they line up. And then a plate layer on top of that. And after that, you can do whatever you like. Although normally what you're going to see is that road layer on top that's two studs wide and a sidewalk layer that's one stud wide. So you really only get 13 by 13 for your model. On scale, the cars themselves tend to be about two studs by a, a plate and a plate tall for typical automobiles. It's a rough scale. So you're looking at maybe seven and a half foot by seven and a half foot by three foot tall for that one by one red tile on the car, just as an idea for how to build but that's kind of constrained and for the trains because of the length of trains and i don't want to have a huge long model i'm using a scale that's 10 by 10 by 4 slightly zoomed in a little bit but you can build bigger and smaller what you see here is a quarter block but it's got either three houses or it's got a big apartment building with lots of dwellings and that scale is all okay. It's not illegal. There isn't something you have to live within. And so the idea is to create the city blocks. And the one thing that I'll call out is that when you're putting together a model where you're starting to grow your city by linking them, that lining up of the sidewalks, the crosswalks, that's going to stand out if you don't have them in the right place. If, if you're off by one and you're next to somebody else who's got it in the right place, your crosswalks don't meet in the middle. And our eyes, the viewers are all gonna, eh, what's that? And we're just gonna you know, be drawn into it. So if you can watch that little bit, that's gonna help. Bigger, smaller, doesn't matter. Here's a couple of half blocks two 16 by 16s joined together as a single, so a 32 and a six. These fit in a sterilite bin pretty well, but you'll need to separate it or, uh, vertically in order to get those into bins for storage. You want to think about how you're going to move these because the real fun is when you take your parts and put them to, together with somebody else's parts and make an amazing city that's never been seen before and then it's all going to be torn down after the weekend as we take them all home again. But the train station here is a little bit more condensed in style. It's a full block plus a half block. And then the trains look like they go down underground at that point. But think about iconic buildings, maybe the big brick schoolhouse, uh, things that you've seen around town, something iconic. Those are the kinds of things you want to try and think about for making some of your models. In this case, you've got white studs, white one by ones in those windows on that tall green skyscraper. And it's just the uh, smoked one by two tiles. But the white underneath, or, or the, the light green tiles, 
and it makes it look like there's lights on in the building. You can see how all the crosswalks line up. Did your eye get drawn to any of them in particular? It, it wasn't a distraction. So what happens when you go to a convention and everybody brings their models? This is where the fun begins because you can put together a huge town, but this is also where the differences in scale start to come in because you'll put some of the models along the front row, the ones that are the larger scale, like the apartment houses down on the forefront of this picture. And you see their scale farther in the background, the tall buildings that have multiple floors instead of the three or four floors in the apartments on the near scale. And by putting the smaller scale buildings in the back and putting the buildings with more detail in the front, you're forcing a perspective and it looks so much bigger than it does because our, our eyes just sort of draw that line to the horizon and see the differences. So it doesn't matter which scale you build when you come together for a city like this, the blocks are all gonna line up. You can put the small stuff over here or in the corners, you can put the bigger, more detailed stuff up in front. Uh, the water feature like the river through town, those are kind of gonna be anchors that you're gonna have to work one side or the other. But bringing your models are easy in Micropolis because they're so small, sterilite bins or something else, they transport easily. And even if they shake apart because you're taking them on an airplane or a road trip, all the pieces are in the bin and you can rebuild those models pretty quick. So the bottom line, Micropolis is quick and easy and fun. It doesn't take many bricks to put together that first module. And once you do that, you'll put together another module or two and have some fun. And then the next lug meeting we get to go to, bring your models, put them together, raft them together and make a city and have some fun with it and see what else people have built. That's the real fun and, and what we're doing in Micropolis. How are we doing on questions for the Micropolis section at this point? All right. There was a uh, <laughs> there was a comment about or a question about do people really use pins at conventions and shows to put their uh, builds their sections together? Um, I guess they've had some experience where they just tend to line them up. Well, uh, lining them up is good, but I tend to use the half pins. Those those little tiny Technic half pins. They're still enough, so they lock into one piece but they'll align you with the other and help keep the levels together. And it does come in handy. I like that one better. Some people will use the, um, the peg and cross axle combination piece, but the cross axle side has a lot more slack. Uh, if you're on a convention table, you sometimes have some odd angles. And so I really like that half peg to be able to, to line up the streets and make it flat from one side to the other. Uh, just another question, kind of our comment about the why, why are the crosswalks uh, one by two tiles instead of a one by two grill tile? Uh, originally, they started looking at the hashed. Uh, I'll, I'll show that in the next one. Let me sneak ahead one slide. Uh, in this model, you can see that the diagonal hashed one by two tile that was in the movie set. That was part of the clapboard for starting your movie. Those are hard to come by, but those are really a good crosswalk because of the width of the scale versus the one by two tile. And the one by two whites are simply more available and, and readily available. I've been thinking about having some tiles printed and give me some humped zebras or other interesting crosswalk pieces that would fit in there and some right turn only lanes and uh, just some things to add a little bit more spice to the soup. Alrighty, we're into Micropolis 2. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up a couple of other Micropolis questions if they're trailing as we come back. Micropolis 2 was me. I like lights, I like Arduinos or blinky lights or even static lights in a mock. And that requires power. 
And if you wanted to do that, you either had to put yours on the outside of Micropolis, or you had to figure out how to get the wires underneath the table so that you didn't have a bump in the models because everybody was pegging together, right? The idea was that I went ahead and figured out how to run the wires underneath, figured five volts would be a good common power scheme. USB bank would do the right thing for me. But taking the models back and forth to meetings was a lot of fun. Having the lights, I've heard from Bill Ward that Chicago has some of the best after dark sessions with lit models and you have been an inspiration for trying to figure out how to enable more people to put lights in their models. Uh, so this really has been the foundation of why I tried to put lights in. And a USB power pack or a charging wart and then a cable to a power hose that goes underneath the models, that really did look like the right answer. And so I've played around with it a little bit. It's working well. And some of the folks in Baylug are starting to adapt it. And the difference is that you just put the arch bricks in on either side of that Technic brick in the middle. And at that point, you can run wires underneath. It's still the plate and then a brick and then a plate vertical structure. But that gap underneath the arch lets you run the wires between models and then just plug in your model and drop the model down on top of the layout. Looking at it from above, it looks like this. So there's no road plates on any of these, no surfaces on top of the models. But you can see the arch bricks and where the wires on that harness can just weave from module to module to module and plug into somebody's mock and run off to the next mock and provide it. And if you're not using the power, that's okay. But if you want to use it, that power harness can feed seven different models in one area from a single power pack. Keys to this, if you're going to do it, instead of covering the top of your Micropolis module just with that plate layer, is you put in a Technic plate that's got a hole, or maybe you leave a plate out if it's going to be under a building, uh, but leave a way to put the wires and the lights up through. And you can get some tiny lights. You can get them through that Technic hole without having to do anything else with it. Now, the difference here is when you don't have that substructure left to right, north to south, uh, under the plate itself, you can have a little bit of structure underneath when you try and push on your model that it's going to fall apart. And what I'll do originally is just put a couple pieces underneath to give me that plate and brick extra height. And now I can push on the top of the model while I'm busy putting my model in. If you're doing a regular model that doesn't have electronics, leaving this room underneath for the models, for the wires to go back and forth under your layout means that your mock is going to sit flat and the wires can go right underneath you. So, lights are easy. The connector is a polarized connector just to make sure that LEDs work and nothing burns out. But this is a little tiny string of lights, you can get 50 of them running off of three pen light batteries to put in your Christmas ornaments or wind up through plants. Uh, Michael's, some of the craft places have these for like five bucks. And you just cut off five or 10 of them. I put a simple diode in line to drop the five volts down to four and a half. This is kind of important. Uh, I documented on my web page and the link is at the end of the uh, session here. It's micropolis2.pvworks.com. But again, URL is going to be at the end as well. Taking that string of lights and running it up through that Technic plate in the middle of the firehouse, and then just spreading the wires and tucking them around a stud and locking it down with the one by one clear reds there is all the anchor I need to make that sturdy and keep the lights in place. And that's the backlight behind all my windows and my, my mock. Here's another one. This was one of the first ones I came up with. It's actually modeled after the Transit Center in Stockton, California. And it's a bus center, bus depot with an outdoor uh, loading area under an awning for a bunch of models. 
but what you can see on the left is that I've got red and black wires coming up. That's for a series of wires that go under the awning at the top of the, the beige and the yellow one by one rounds. And then the other two wires are for loading lights. Uh, what do I mean by that? Under the awning, there's two LEDs, the one on the right under that brown one or two by two arched brick. Uh, that light flashes on and off to let you know that this bus is ready to depart. And the other one is under the orange brick near the back. It's not lit right now. And underneath that model, I actually have a little computer that plugs into a connector that I glued to a tile. So the idea is that the, the inverted tile holds the connector underneath the model. The wires go up through the holes. And if I need to take that board out and reprogram it or replace it, I unplug it, do the thing, plug it back in, and it just works. If it ever breaks, I can replace it easy. And locking the models, locking the power connector to the model is just that plate, plate, plate combination, the one by four, a couple of one by ones, and the one by four. And that'll hold the wire snugly near one of the arches so that when I go to put it up, I'm holding a model with one hand. I've got the connectors with the other hand and can put two together, put the model down. Uh, the bus barn really was the first one that I put an Arduino into. I've done a lot of these just because they run on five volts and you can animate a model and by using light and flashing, you can draw the viewer's eyes room to room as well as illuminating the room and showing all the detail that you've put into that mock. So this isn't just about lights, it's about being able to put a little embedded dedicated bespoke computer in your mock to do whatever you'd like it to do. And then you don't have to worry about asking somebody else to push buttons or change batteries or do something else if you have a weekend long or a week or two week long display for your lug. Uh, it's hard to ask somebody to disassemble a model and change a battery pack and turn things on and off when it's not their model. And if they break it, they're gonna feel miserable. When it's built in like this and it's plugged in, somebody turns on a power strip, the wall wart turns on, the power connector goes up to the table and away you go. Everything just works. So this is what Micropolis 2 has really been all about. Trying to tuck the wires in, come up with a plan, see how well it works. The one by two Technic brick is common in a lot of designs that you'll see for Micropolis. I use one by fours. And the reason I use the one by fours is because these quarter blocks are so small, and not necessarily tall. You can stack the shallow ones and put two of them in one position in your bin. And if you've got the quarter, if you've got those cross axles in and you use the two stud long peg to lock it in place, now that keeps those two modules from rattling around and knocking pieces off when you transport it. But when you get there, you pull out the red pegs on top, take your mock off, pull the red pegs off, and put the brackets back in the bin. Real quick way to take your mocks in and out. Uh, again, more information on the website, the URL will be at the back, but questions about Micropolis too. Uh, we had a, a comment, uh, someone said Micropolis 2.0 is awesome. That was from Larry. Yay. Uh, Ashley says that's a good idea to help with transportation and storage. She likes your uh, last uh, suggestion there. And that works with Micropolis or Micropolis too. It, it's not dependent on the arches. Feel free. I'm, I'm not charging. That's a royalty free idea. <laughs> hey Zunker, I have a question. Yes. Um, do you see a crossover between what you're doing with Micropolis 2.0 and GBC? Could there be application of some of these same ideas with the computer chips into a GBC? Yes, indeed. And, and I've been working on a few for that. I'll, I'll take 30 seconds and just give you a taste. Uh, but using a little computer, photo sensor, watches balls come by. If nothing else, it just increments and gives you a, a display with a digital counter. How many balls have we handled today? 
that's one. Another one's going to be using a color sensor, so constraining the balls coming in through a funnel, and as they pass over the color sensor, it can tell is that a soccer ball, is that a basketball, is that a white ball, and based on that, swivel a servo and pitch it one way or pitch it another, and sort your marbles before they get to the other end and they re-aggregate and go off to the next module. But just make some decisions out of that. And uh, you can kind of do some of that with Mindstorms, not as much. Uh, the other thing I want to do is use a photo sensor and as balls are coming through, figure out, am I moving balls through fast enough? If I haven't passed my 30 a second, I can speed my motor up. If I'm getting too many, I can slow that motor down. And I haven't seen anybody do that with Microcalus or uh, with Mindstorms yet. Not that it can't be done. Well, it just seems like uh, the Ar Arduino would be less expensive than the uh, Mindstorms. Not I have Mindstorms, I love it, but if you're looking for a, a less expensive way to animate, that might be one way. Yep, using an Arduino usually means you've got to have some soldering skill or a friend who will make the connectors and put the wires on for you. Uh, it's not a stretch, but that, that's the thing that you don't have to do with Mindstorms. All right, let's get into trains. Hey, real quick, Zonker, you had two more, two quick questions came in. Okay. One, one from Carl, he wanted to know, uh, he says, 2.0 looks great. He has to, he yep. had a question about the electronic. For Carl? Uh, Carl, the electronic aspects, uh, is it finalized or is it still evolving in what you're doing with the electronics? Uh, the electronics are, are subject to evolution. I'm not going to say it's locked in and, and concrete. Uh, I use a polarized Molex pin, but it had been hard to get in and out. So I actually sand the things off of one side of the connector so that they slide in more easily, but they're still polarized. Is there a better connector to use or a cheaper connector? Maybe. Uh, I'm open to those discussions, certainly. Uh, uh, and happy to trade emails with Carl or anybody else who wants to talk about it. Uh, the other question came from Paul, and he wanted to know, do you have notes on the electronics, the Arduino, the wiring diagrams, anything like that that you could share? Uh, I do. They are on the, the Micropolis 2 website. So it shows how to use the diode as a, a voltage dropper for hooking up the LEDs and some of the notes about all of that to, to try and help new folks into it get started. Look around your Micropolis builds, especially when we get to have big lug meetings anymore. Uh, and think about pictures that you see. What's missing in your club's collection? Uh, something iconic. Up in Portland, I love these canals. Uh, these were a really clever adaptation, and Bill Wards brought some down and added it to the collection we have when we display. Um, I didn't see any trains other than Bill's metro train, which didn't have wheels, but I, I had ideas. So as you look at Facebook, as you look at other conventions and pictures, keep in mind what might make a good micro scale model to try and bring to your next big lug meeting when we finally get to celebrate and shake hands and hug and do. For me, it was going to be trains. But looking at the canal modules, they were stackable because they don't have a lot of height. I actually tried that with some of my train modules and it works okay, but I haven't quite found the right way to do Technic and still fit in a bin. So I'm still working on that idea. But there were a few trains. They were small. Uh, most of them didn't have wheels. They just sat, but it used the grill tiles. So it looked good. I wanted to figure out how to get wheels on it. I thought about the roller skates. And I saw this picture. And I'm pretty sure those are stickers or not Lego for the, the yellow bricks on those train cars. But what was that piece underneath? Holy cow, that'll do. Those are minifig roller skate wheels, although I'm, I'm not sure that they haven't been modified because the skate wheel actually has a toe and a heel portion. But when I saw the wheels, that was the thing that had been missing from for me from some of those other models. 
and Bill had brought a huge metro station that looks like our Bay Area Rapid Transit. Uh, it's quite a bit taller from the ground scale wise, but the, the trains on that don't have any wheels. They just sit on top of studs. The other thing is that this base is suddenly now four studs wider than other modules. And so it's a half block and a half block on the other side, plus four extra studs down the middle. And that has to go all the way down the city block. And so he's built elevated sections and he's built little four wide street parks that extend the street grid in order to go ahead and bring his model in. And so in this one, you can really see where that comes into play. We've got the, the canal module in the middle of town. There's no way to get wires across that. I'm working on that now. Uh, I'm actually working on an adaptation that would take the road module that crosses the bridge and bring wires in to a canal module that then goes up under the bridge roadside and back the other side to pass power from one side of the canal to the other. But in the foreground of this picture, my bus barn is there with a big black space. I need to build a little something else on that end of the half block. But then the tracks come down. There's that extra four wide section in between that still joins everything together. And then my next lit models powered off by the, the power pack here under a little demonstration and a lot of my trains that I was working on just for fun. And when we get together for these models, we end up with really big displays. But this is the big fun of getting your mocks together and having fun with it. I'd seen Bill's trains. I'd been playing around with passenger cars, having picked up a handful of skate wheels from Bricklink. I wanted to start working on more freight. I just, I wanted more trains. If I put it around the outside, it's low. It's not going to obscure anybody's model. Other big mocks sometimes block the view of the little modules that got put behind. Uh, it seemed like I could put a two track main line in eight studs and wrap around the layout. You could have opposing directions trains. It, it could look really good. And as a long border, you could put long trains out there. It wouldn't just be a few cars. Uh, this made me real excited. And I started working on cars and tried to figure out how I could make things. I was trying different color combinations. The passenger cars on the bottom row were supposed to be Southern Pacific. Did I want the Mars red? Did, did I want the, the dark red or the, the other red? New dark gray or old dark gray? Uh, some of those nuances, we have a finite palette, but even the direction of the corrugated bricks on the boxcar doors, vertical or horizontal. Uh, this start of a palette was a way to try and take a look at the orientation of those parts. But it was coming together and I was working on pieces. And then I went to Bricks Cascade. And there was a little model at the end of the very big train layout. But in this, I saw a little freight terminal. I saw the white corrugated steel cars that are popular around Boeing and Spokane. Uh, there's that dark red steam locomotive up in front, a little train running across. There's another metro train up on the next tracks. There was another more current train, but look at the steam coming out of the stack on that steam locomotive. The caboose was a nice hack. On a warehouse in the foreground, I love those big, low slopes. For me, they've always been the street crossing on a train layout, a real nine volt train layout. I'm going to make myself a couple of warehouses and served industries. Yeah, this, I was inspired. I came home after taking these pictures, bound and determined to make my Micropolis train layout. 
And when we got home from the airport, my wife gave me a notebook and I started to write down everything and all the post-its that I'd been writing on the plane on the way home to try and remember the ideas. And it continued to grow. I just, my world had changed. This can be done. I didn't have a lot of time. And then COVID hit. <laughs> and you know what that does to mail deliveries? But that's okay. Maybe we're going to be able to have our July conference. I've got time. I, I still need to work on it in case. And I did. I, I started with an idea. Eventually, two months later, I had this. This is an overhead view on a six foot by three foot table. And the key was that left hand corner, how to make a turn and how to line up the main line and align it with a regular modular build a Micropolis city grid. And what I found was that if I lined it up with a grid, I needed the main line to actually have another set of street, another two studs of street and a sidewalk, as well as my other studs. And so that corner actually comes apart in two pieces. Let's see. I'm not sure how to stop sharing the screen for a moment, so I'll hold it up to the camera. But when I need to pack it in a bin, I take it apart. That's my 16 wide to go into my Sterilite case. That piece can go up on top. And those little half pegs are all I need to line it back up again, make them connect. And in order to get around the curve, there really is a lot of wonky work going on with one by one jumper pipes or two by two jumpers uh, and the, the grill tiles and then the cars themselves. Some of them have to be what actually hold the model together. Oops. Other pieces. And that model went through a few iterations. It started off without the extra road and, and it was the wrong level and that curve changed a couple of times. I watched a lot of, uh, what do you call it, the Lego Masters show originally while I was doing that. So I was building with friends. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun to be working on my Lego project. Originally, I thought the outside main lines would just be quick and easy snap in. But if you don't have that lower plate layer, the modules bow. <laughs> and so I really did need to turn them back. And if I was gonna do it, I needed to put arch bricks back. As I started to get the main line finished, I thought I need a yard. And this became the first of the yard modules. I've got one that's a left-hand entry, one that's a right-hand entry. So that I've got an in and an out, but you could put a left and a right on different parts of the layout. And this was the start again. I have done some studio drawings for some of these different modules. This is the main line showing all the tiles and pieces that you'd have to collect if you wanted to do it, how to build up the layers for the arch bricks. And as I did more and more space was needed as I did more rolling stock, the intermodal cars were the next challenge because as you play with the roller skate wheels, that toe on the end and that heel in back stick out just a little farther than a one by one brick. And so you can't just put them side by side together. What you wind up with is a half stud offset between cars. It looks really good, but you have to end up using a jumper plate underneath the next one so that they line up and, and look close. The first two sides of the yards looked pretty good, but it was pretty small. And so I would do some yard extensions. I got the main line filled out, intermodal train on one side, automobile carriers on another, wrapped around the corner. I started to fill in the mock blocks with some of my own mocks. And 
and let you see what it would look like with wires running in and underneath. There's a little tiny town square with a big water tower on it. And the power goes underneath that to go under the next module, which is just a mock plate. But it's lighting the beige construction tower. It's lighting the bus barn. It's passing to the firehouse. And all of that can be run by a power bank that sits across the table. And then the rest of the blocks were undone. You can see some of the automobiles and other greebling I put around the layout as we start to populate the city streets. But just adding one more half block in that yard gives you a lot of extra room. And so once I had a six foot table, I, I could extend it longer, but I was at a table now. And so what I did was put them together as best I could. And, and this is a quick little GoPro flyby of what the model looks like at, at a little bit closer. I had a chance to see where all those blocks sit side by side. And at the top of the construction crane tower, there's a little red safety light. The control tower with all clear windows around so that the controller could see up and down the main line in either direction. Crossovers between the main lines. Nicest thing is it disconnects easily and packs into three tubs. Everything stacks up really short. Most of it's the same level. Uh, what you can see in this particular photo at the, the top and bottom of any of those modules are the arrow tiles, the one by two arrows. And they were for the construction videos for some of the pictures that I took to show you where modules ended. And so as you take a look at some of the other pictures, you'll, you'll notice that uh, one are just the main lines for the left-hand side past the curve because they don't have roads. The yellows and blacks have the road portions and the sidewalk with a fence between the trains and the sidewalk. By the time we get up to the yard, the sidewalk has to cut off and go to the other side. And so the little yellow crosswalks there chase you over. And all I do is when I take them apart, there are a few pieces that join one module to the other, pull them off, put them onto one of the two modules. And when I put it back together, it's easy to move them back into position and it's all locked down. And pretty much that's the end of the questions and, or end of the videos and the slides portion. But now I've got show and tell I can do. Uh, after I did the video, somebody had made a mention that it would be a good idea to try and use the little identification marks. Here we go. Uh, colors. I need lights. Uh, if you're sharing your modules on a bigger display, did you want to put a color there, a key to indicate this is my module, not somebody else's. So in that one by one corner, you can actually stack three plates or three rounds in a different color and say this mock is my mock and know that it's there and you don't have to label them. But that's where the road shifts. And because the road shifts and goes around the yard now, then the main line now has a passing siding as well through that section of the yard where the road used to be. And that gives you just one more element that you can use to put a passenger train on the siding while the other two main lines have trains going by. Quick show and tell on some of the trains. I guess I need more light on this again. There we go. So a locomotive, an auto carrier, uh, intermodal or a piggyback flat car, a couple of box cars with a vertical door and a horizontal door, and a tank car. I've got those in a few different colors. Uh, those are a four long bar holding three one by one rounds. And then the one by one rounds are holding the minifig neck piece, which is that L bracket. Uh, one is holding the dome on top of the train car, and then the other two are holding the wheels at the far end. And then we get into intermodal. And the hard part about this was those skate wheels, that toe doesn't stick out well. 
uh, and the back of it would get caught in the well. And so underneath, these are just one by one black bricks. And it sits on a stud and it looks like a low bodied well car. But the bottom of each of the wells here is a one by six brick, or sorry, one by six plate with studs. And then it's one by two tiles on the end and one by three tiles in the middle. Back to the intermodals. Uh, this was a chance for me to play with Lego colors. And so those are one by two plates and one by four plates with one by four tiles or one by two tiles on top. And they come in all sorts of colors. So you can mix and match and give you that definition. Uh, let's find a couple of other things to show here. The other thing that I wanted to do as a, a train enthusiast is this is a Southern Pacific uh, detailed paint scheme, but this is a fairly popular color scheme for railroaders and a passenger car with coaches and first class and baggage and a dome car at one point. And finally you get to the far end of the train and you've even got a dome car at the end, a, a little observation deck. But this one I'll turn around because I want you to see how when I put these things together, I end up with studs underneath the wheels. And this is how I figure that out is just the, the one by two tiles alongside the track put the studs where the wheels are going to go. And the studs sit on top and every once in a while I've got to have a blank tile in there because it's an odd number. But that way you don't have something that stands out. And for these two models, for the passenger lines, I've done a Southern Pacific and I've done a Union Pacific. Uh, the silver skate wheels were just the thing. And they wind up looking really good. The other thing that I've been playing with recently is somebody posed the question, because I had built a really large nine volt turntable once upon a time for our train labs. Uh, what about having a turntable for Micropolis? And I said, well, you know, that could be tricky. But then one night I wound up not being able to sleep well. And so summertime high heat and what I wound up with was trying to figure out how to make something that would fit that plate and brick and plate height and end up with tracks that would be at the right height for the modules. And what you've got is a, a two by two plate uh, with a, a turntable underneath and then a two by two round plate and then a couple of one by two jumper plates on top of it because of the offset that you need to hold that at a balance point. You're looking at nine, 11 or 13 studs across for the turntable in order to make things work well. But it, it does turn nicely when, when I've got three hands, this works really well. But can you fit it into Micropolis? And the answer is yes, yes you can. So there's that turntable on a 16 by 16 base and showing that the square is where that's going to have to line up in order for that track to line. But I can now take something like that and make a half block or a full block and build my roundhouse around it and line that up with a couple of tracks that take off and go back out to the main line. So challenge accepted. <laughs> now I have time until our next conventions when we can show off again and, and by then I'll, I'll have the next big thing to show. Interestingly, uh, while I was inspired here in 2020, I've been doing notebooks about what I'm going to do for various conventions going back to 2016, 2017. And just, you know, I, can you see the, the little marks on the side where I've indexed how to find, where's my Micropolis? Where's my GBC stuff? And so this train idea goes back to 2016 with me. <laughs> uh, but the, the real bulk of it came this year where uh, I filled pages with what I wanted to do, but also 
find my fingers, there we go, drawings of how would the yard shape up and what would it look like. And uh, I decided the yard would only be a half, half module wide, but full module long. And the other half module would be an industry track where a siding now can drop off box cars or flat cars of material to the back of an industry that can then have trucks on the front served by the road that's going around in the block format. So it all stays in a standard micropolis block, but the, the factory modules that the industries can fit into a couple of tubs and, and all the yard can fit into a couple of tubs. Oh, uh, and the other thing that is, I was working on when they challenged me to do the turntable is this is going to be my take on a lift bridge or a draw bridge to go over the canal module so that the train can cross the canal as well since the canal is usually at right angles to the border. <laughs> so I have to do something there. All in all, it's been a lot of fun. And if anybody wants to talk Micropolis trains or real trains or anything else, I'm happy to, to do that as we socialize later. How are we doing on questions? Uh, like the end of my time, so. Yeah, th there's uh, Robert said he loves your models. He wants to know where you're going to show them next. <laughs> He's inspired. <laughs> um, I'm really putting more pictures up. I, I don't have an Instagram page, uh, but I will start putting more pictures on the uh, Micropolis 2 page so folks can find things. And I'll be doing more of the studio, studio, studio drawings for some of those. Um, Ashley kind of asked, you know, I, it's one sided, but she said, have you ever tried experimenting with those binocular pieces uh, for tiny train wheels? Um, I, I have, uh, and, and I didn't write them off. They are larger than the skate wheels. And so uh, for steam trains, those might wind up being my larger drivers. For example, uh, I've got a couple of steam ideas. I haven't done it. I have collected a lot of white ice cream scoop pieces, so I'm ready to do that part. Uh, the other side was, uh, the other reason I hadn't done it yet is that when I was working on a lot of these, like the auto carriers, uh, that I was still doing a lot of this where I was saying, do I want horizontal, do I want vertical? And the binocular pieces are asymmetrical left to right if I use them as wheels. And so I, I stuck with the skates and luckily I was able to get a couple of brick link, brick link orders in and get a bunch of skate wheels. I have a Ziploc sandwich baggie now full of one by two grill tiles in dark gray, just because they all finally came in after bricks by the bay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I did get a bunch. I am gonna get more of the silver skate wheels. Uh, those are thanks to Tiffany down in Southern California, down in Bakersfield. She gifted me, I think, 20 or 25. And so that's what went under all of my uh, different passenger cars. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of praise. Union Pacific version of the passenger cars. Okay. Now a lot of praise, uh, appreciate it, uh, like the work. Um, Steve did have a question. He wanted to know, he says, uh, can you tell us about real life railroading? Oh, I have stories. Uh, I, as a brakeman, our job is all about safety and making sure that the train gets over the road. So I walk that train at least a mile before it ever leaves the yard, checking brakes, doing everything else. For our Christmas trains, we have cabooses. They're standalone parties. They're not attached. They're, they're coupled, but they're not walkable through the train because the couplers on a caboose are longer. And so they become standalone parties. One night we had no parties in the caboose. And as the train was pulling out of town, the engineer on the trailing locomotive called out that we had somebody running for the train from the porta potties in a dress, in high heels. And she jumped on a caboose. And they lost sight of her because the caboose door was open. She'd gone into the caboose. She was heading for the dome car. <laughs> oh, crap. By the time anybody else can get to the back of the dome car to see what's going on, she's already outside standing on a coupler in high heels, trying to get the gate open to the door to the back of the car, which is locked. 
we have to try and stop a train without dumping this lady between the tracks and under the wheels of a caboose. Because all of her friends, they were already well lubricated. Uh, they were already on the dome car and she didn't want to miss the train. <laughs> oh man. We did knock on the porta potty doors and say, train is leaving, gotta go. And apparently whatever was going on took longer, but was necessary. That's just one. <laughs> Let's see. Yep. Uh, yeah, there's just some other people uh, say nice job. Um, he says, my grandpa was an engineer in Burlington trains. Oh. So it runs in his blood. Um, someone said, Margaret said she jumped a moving train once, but not in high heels. Yep. I, I do admit I did jump onto a freight train one time because it was slow and wouldn't you know it, that thing was getting faster and faster and there was only one answer because it was heading to San Francisco and I wasn't. <laughs> and so tuck and roll on the ballast and never did that trick again. But now I know how to get on and off rolling equipment and it's my choice if I do or not. Very good. Well, I don't see any other questions uh, in the chat. Thank you uh, everyone for attending. I, I appreciate having an audience that appreciates the models that we're working on and 